My name's April and I'm with the Oracle Works. Um, today we're going to do a divine counterpart check-in. Um, we're going to do both divine masculine and divine feminine energy. Uh, this morning in my meditation, um, Spirit said, really, check back in with the divine masculine. I know the last reading I did, they were, they were really going through it. So um, I'm going to do both. I'm going to get one song. Um, I want to start with the divine masculine, though. Um, I really like to do the music, like the shuffle, and kind of see where the energy is. So I am going to ask um, Spirit if they could give us a song uh, that kind of tells us where the Divine Masculine's energy is right now. Um, make sure my phone is turned up. <laughs> oh, it's sweet. <laughs> so I got Taylor Swift Love Story, and I am going to... Um, put this uh, I'll link it down below but it says we were both young when I first saw you I closed my eyes and the flashbacks start I'm standing there on a balcony in summer air so it's interesting because if you're familiar with this particular song it's a very sweet song but essentially uh, she sings about her family not approving of her Romeo to her Juliet right also it's it, it speaks to that Romeo Juliet love story so I think the divine masculine is recognizing his Juliet but I do think that there's people around them that um that don't approve so it's possible this divine masculine is really reminiscing on that also with that um, we were both young when I first saw you. It's possible that you were young when you met your uh, divine masculine. This uh, counterpart couple could have been young uh, when they first came into that initial union um, in the 3D. So I just want to get, um, and that's this is just confirmation of the sun. So I'm going to ask Spirit if they can give me uh, five cards, overall energy for our divine masculines. Um I just kind of want to see where are they at right now, energetically. Five cards, Spirit, if you could give me five cards for our Divine Masculine, please. I am using the Gilded Royale Tarot deck again. I will link it below. Um, I really have been drawn to this deck. I like it a lot. Spirit said to shuffle again. Um, so I'm going to give it a good shuffle here. And uh, really clear the energy. I love these cards, though. Um, they're beautiful. Five cards, please. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we have the full to start. This is great energy. Uh, four more cards, please, for our Divine Masculines. Where are our Divine Masculines? Oh, you know, it's interesting. The Queen of Cups. Um, this full card. Oh, I can't wait to show this. Okay, where are our Divine Masculines right now? Um... Uh, three more cards, please, for our Divine Masculines. Three more cards. The Ace of Wands. Wow. This is beautiful energy. The King of Wands. Wow. This is beautiful. Oh, shit. Just, should I keep that? No. Um, one more card, please. Oh, my God. These cards are kind of chaotic, though. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I got the Nine of Swords, the Emperor. So again, this masculine recognizes who he is, and the Five of Swords. And then at the bottom, the Two of Cups, the Death card, Five of Wands. Okay, so we're going to get into this. This Fool card, why I said it was beautiful, because this Fool, and again, I love these cards, but if you guys can see his hands right here, one hand's on Cancer, one's on Gemini. What's amazing about this is right now in the sky, we have Mars and Cancer and Venus just moved into Gemini, I believe. Um, so that's amazing. And the planets really play a big part in divine counterpart relationships. So I love that that's what's happening in our sky right now. And this fool, I think... 
this this divine masculine may have Gemini cancer placements. So the transit of what's happening in the sky may be heavily playing in this person's chart right now. Again, though, with this fool and the moon. So cancer may be really significant here. This could be a water. I believe the, the energy I was tapping into the other day really was a heavy water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. This could uh, This divine masculine may have heavy cancer in their chart. But again, with the fool kind of starting this energy out, this person wants to take a leap of faith, but they are so afraid. There's also, though, there's a new beginning. So in their energy, there could be a new beginning of some kind, and it is terrifying them. Um, so they may either... Uh, something could have just changed is what I'm, what I'm seeing. But this is also like I'm heavily getting the divine feminine here. So something in their life could have just uh, changed, new beginning with the fool. But also they're so heavily thinking about the divine feminine right now. Like I'm feeling the divine feminine all over this, um, especially with the queen of cups. But what I will say about this queen of cups, she looks pregnant. This particular Queen of Cups, and the Queen of Cups is like a mother energy, again with the Cancer. Heavy water and fire here. Heavy water, fire. Um, it's possible this Divine Masculine is pregnant. This could be a female Divine Masculine. Could be, though, a third party. Maybe, um, maybe uh, trigger warning, there, there may be a pregnancy here. Um, also though, it could be the divine feminine. I'm getting though, I'm taking this as their divine feminine, but also again, there could be a third party here and this third party may be with child. It could be the new beginning, but again, there's so much fear. This is really feminine energy though. Um, there's so much masculine energy here, but there is a feminine energy around this divine masculine right now. And it's possible this feminine energy is with child. So again, trigger warning. Um, and again, with the Ace of Wands and the King of Wands, this divine masculine right now, not only in uh, their um, like masculine creation energy, but again with birthing something new birthing something new with the ace of wands and the king of wands the king of wands upright is you know he uh, this is an entrepreneur this is a this is a divine masculine energy they know what they want very fiery very passionate especially paired with the emperor here you know the king of wands is that sagittarius leo uh, Aries energy, the Emperor, and this is the Divine Masculine, the Emperor is Aries. Um, and again, this Emperor, um, well, I'm going to talk about the King of Wands first. So with the Ace of Wands, the King of Wands to come out back to back, this is definitely a new beginning. So much fire because the Fool is also Aries energy. This is like taking a leap of faith, starting a new path, doing something new. And I think it has to do with a mother energy. I think there's going to be a baby because again, this queen of cups looks pregnant. She doesn't particularly look happy though. And the, and this fool with this moon, there's a lot of fear about this new beginning, but I think also I just heard like lit his ass on fire. I don't know what that means, but uh, a fire has been lit underneath this divine masculine. So if it's the feminine that he's thinking about, if if it's the fem... I'm going to clarify this. I'm going to clarify this Queen of Cups because typically in my readings, the Queen of Cups is the divine feminine, but I ask for overall energy here. So, but a fire has been lit underneath this divine masculine, heavily in their masculine, that fire energy, new beginnings, birthing something, entrepreneurship this could be a change of job uh this divine masculine may have just changed uh jobs or got a promotion is what i was just told um but they are definitely recognizing something and they are wanting to take 
a fiery, passionate leap. Really quick, I am going to um, clarify this Queen of Cups. I'm going to use my personal deck. This is the Hermetic Tarot deck. Um, the Queen of Cups. Is this a third party in the Divine Masculine's life? Can you please clarify, Spirit? Is this the, a third party in the Divine Masculine's life? Yes. Okay. Um, can you give me one card for this uh, third party, please? Okay. So, yes. This... Um, I saw the Queen of Cups again pop out. I think there is a pregnancy with this Divine Masculine. So trigger warning to my Divine Feminines. Um, there is a third party who is currently pregnant. So again, for the Emperor to come out, you know, that could be children. Um, again, this is passionate, fiery energy. This is Aries. But what I love about this Emperor, again, with the sky... So I definitely feel like with all of this fire energy here, not only is this divine masculine going on a new path with a baby, because I think they're literally a baby is birthing into their existence right now. Um, but I think they're starting to recognize who I just heard who the hell I am. So I don't know what that means, but I think they're starting to recognize the feminine. I think they're starting to understand their place spiritual side uh magical also uh the king and queen of wands magical king and queen so this divine masculine is just as magical as their divine feminine but there is a lot of fear here so if there is a pregnancy um for this emperor there's so much fear i just heard anger too Why are you mad? It's a lot of fire. So, I mean, uh, but here at the end, we have the nine of swords and the five of swords. And again, at the bottom of the deck, we had the two of cups, the death card, and the five of wands. So, and I just split the deck and I got the wheel of fortune. So the nine of swords, this is, this is air energy, but this is also like, I always think of, you know, the nine of swords also like water energy too, because it's like heavily in your emotion, but it's also like that mental mind. It's like Gemini energy, but you'll notice the, the woman here, she's blindfolded and this, this girl, you know, she, it looks like they're hugging themselves. Like, almost, I, I got a message almost about, like, reparenting themselves. This is somebody who's, like, waking up in the middle of the night or staying up late at night just stressing over their life. But you'll notice the owl here. It's like the owl is trying to say, like, you're going to be okay. Like, the wisdom. The, I just heard serenity. I don't normally liken that to owls, but like the wisdom, the serenity, the peace, like it's coming like this. I think this divine masculine is aware of who they are now. And I just got a very interesting message that it took this birth for them to figure it out. So maybe a baby was just born or the person they're attached to is pregnant. But it's like they now know. They now know who they are. But see, she's still blindfolded, the feminine energy. But also, again, she kind of looks like she's rising up here, right? It's like the spirit is like rising up here. It's like this divine masculine is now starting to become aware of their higher self. It's like their higher learning, their higher purpose. And with the emperor, it's like, yes, this is also a father. So this is like the father of tarot. So there may be other children involved here, but I'm sensing a new 
a new beginning is what I was just told. So like a new child. Um, this emperor is aware he's an emperor. Not only an emperor in his uh, life, but an emperor to his empress. And again, it's like a fire was lit underneath this person's ass. And they are now aware of who they are. It's like this magical, like king of wands. Like I'm the king of wands. Like I'm magical is what I'm hearing. But it's causing a lot of stress. And then with the five of swords, it's like again, and the five of wands at the bottom of the deck, there was manipulation here. There was manipulation. So either this divine masculine, and my heart chakra is going off, either this divine masculine was manipulative or the third party they're connected to was manipulative. But it's causing five of wands. It's causing chaos. People are fighting in the family right now. So either this person is fighting with their significant other, the divine masculine, or there's people around these two that are causing drama, is what I was just told. But Spirit is saying, it, it, I mean, with, with the Wheel of Fortune, this had to happen. This is divine timing. With the death card here, Pluto right now, Pluto's in Aquarius. Pluto may also be heavily transiting this divine masculine's chart. I just saw like like Pluto in the seventh house, so that may be significant to somebody. But um, a lot of, of change is coming. Not only maybe in this masculine's life, if there is a pregnancy here, but also with the people around them is what I was just told. Because spirit is trying to direct the divine masculine towards the feminine. This is soulmate love. Again, again though, um, you know... Uh, I'm not really quite sure the planet that is back here. It could be Earth, but to me, it looks like the moon. Again, the fear. And I, I think this is the same collective I was tapping into last time. Um, see the rainbow here? These two are very magically connected. Um, I'm getting like that Piscean energy again with the fish. But these two... This divine masculine, divine feminine collective I'm tapping into with the rainbow, telepathic communication, deep bond is what I was just told. Tale as old as time is what I just heard in my head. What is that? Is that Disney? Beauty and the Beast, Tale as old as time. Is that a song? Um, and again with Romeo and Juliet, like in the song, like Beauty and the Beast, uh, Romeo and Juliet. It's it's almost like this divine masculine now knows who they are. They know who their feminine is to them, but they have like a whole life in front of them, a, a life that they're attached to. Conflict. Again, with the Five of Wands, this has got to be the same collective. Uh, the Five of Wands, this is Mars North Node energy. People around you do not agree with your destination in life, your destiny. North Node is your destiny. It's where you... It's where you should go. You know, your south node is where you were and where you came from and what you're used to. Your north node is what you're striving to go towards. But with the five of wands, this is usually family, people we love. They don't agree with it and they do not agree with this. This is not the third party. This is the feminine. Um, they do not, the people around this divine masculine do not agree with this union. And again, with divine counterparts, there's always a societal issue you have to overcome. So with divine counterparts, true divine counterparts, you have to choose each other. You have to choose each other. And you choose each other out of unconditional love. And it helps you not only heal the people around you, but you teach the people around you unconditional love. And societal issues with that Romeo and Juliet song, Love Story, Taylor Swift, you know, it could be age. It could be gender, it could be race, it could be sexuality, religious factors, family creed is what I was just told, um, societal, like family society. Um, so it could be wealth, um, spirituality, but there's always something that society deems, like why, right? And the people in your life, they don't agree with it. But divine counterparts have to choose each other. Divine counterparts are meant to be in union. 
in a 3D. And this divine counterpart couple that I'm tapping into, I mean, the beginning of time is what I'm hearing. Tale as old as time. Beauty and the Beast. Romeo and Juliet. Um, I'm now going to... Uh, um, and I just split the deck and I got the moon. There is this masculine is heavily in their emotions right now and their passion with the knight of wands here you know th this masculine i think is going back and forth like emotion passion emotion passion uh, lit a fire under their ass is what i was just told um but they're so afraid so i want to get five cards and ask spirit uh um, the energy for the feminine specifically. Um, can I get five cards for the divine masculine? How is this masculine feeling about their divine feminine? How is this masculine feeling about their divine feminine? Eight of swords. It's not great energy to start out in. Uh, four more cards, please. How's this divine masculine? King of pentacles. Three more cards, please. Yeah, and that really makes me think like society, like money is involved here with that King of Pentacles. That's a very lavish King of Pentacles. Also, though, um, the hanged man right in the middle, that King of Pentacles is attached to a tree. He's literally rooted into it, which tells me family. Um, Page of Pentacles. One more card, please. And the Six of Wands with the Moon. And at the bottom of the deck, Wheel of Fortune, the Magician, the Devil. Holy shit. Um, okay, so Eight of Swords. Again, the Nine of Swords, Eight of Swords. Eight of Swords is self-imposed prison, though. And again, with the blindfold. It's like this masculine has chosen. They didn't want to see it, is what I was just told. They didn't want to see it. They didn't want to believe it. They always kind of thought, but they didn't want to believe it. But something has happened in this connection that has taken the veil off. Because I, I feel like this is a divine masculine now who's been unveiled. I know this particular person is blindfolded. But if you notice, she's actually not tied to any of the, the swords around her. It's a self-imposed prison. The Eight of Swords. Also, though, with the Eight of Swords self-imposed prison, it's possible this Divine Masculine kept themselves stuck in whatever they were in. Because I feel heavy family influence here. And money is involved. There's a foundation here. This Knight of... Uh, th this Knight. Uh, this King of Pentacles is married. I do believe this divine masculine is married. I think there's children involved here and potentially another one on the way. I think also though, I'm getting a message about society. Um, there's something, there's a huge societal issue with the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And it has to do with money. It has to do with how people view this masculine. Also with the six of wands and the page of pentacles, this Page of Pentacles has a peacock in the back. There's a lot of ego here with this Divine Masculine. I think this particular Divine Masculine cares a lot. Not only about his pentacles, but about how people view him. Also cares a lot about his family, which we do, right? But I think if you notice in this particular uh, King of Pentacles, this king is actually rooted into his, his throne, He's, it's almost like, you know, like in, um, oh, what is the image I'm getting? Like in roller coasters where they have the lap bar, it's like you're locked in. You can't, you can't leave. It's like this particular king, and they don't all look like this, which is why I love this deck. It, the, the imagery is beautiful in this deck. But this particular king of pentacles, one, does not look happy. The look on his face is not happy. Also guarded. See how he's got his staff across him? This is not a, a laid back, relaxed King of Pentacles, um, but he's rooted into his throne and tree roots, right? It's family, the tree of life, generations. I just heard generational curse. I don't know what that means, but um, 
It's almost like this King of Pentacles was put on this throne and he couldn't leave before, even if he, he wanted to, but he doesn't look happy to be there. Also, another interesting thing about this particular King of Pentacles, there's no kingdom behind him. Typically in the King of Pentacles, you see a kingdom behind him. He's got his house, he's got his, you know, his pentacles, his bounty, his, the animals. Uh, the only animal in this card is one squirrel. But this forest looks a little dark. Looks a little like, it, it's giving me the vibe, especially with the Eight of Swords and the Hangman. This is a King of Pentacles who, yeah, he has his, he has a family, um, but he's alone. Whatever he's doing is for image. He doesn't truly have a kingdom, is what I'm getting. I mean, the, the throne that this king is sitting on is gold, it's lavish, but the tree is dead. The tree is dead here. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there's no leaves. On this tree. It's making me sad, actually. I normally don't feel that way about the King of Pentacles. Um, and then we have the Hanged Man. You know? And what's interesting about this Hanged Man, again, this particular Hanged Man, do you see his Pentacles falling? It's possible, too, that um, this King of Pentacles, you know, he does have wealth. And he... Um, I'm getting a couple messages with this. The hangman is stagnancy, but you see how this particular hangman is chained to this like wheel. It's almost like a clock. And the more and more his feminine pulls him up, you know, he knows he's going to have to leave maybe that life behind, or maybe he thinks that that's what he's going to have to do. But that's not the case. Like, I, I like to tell my clients, like, just because you're a twin flame, just because you're spiritual, doesn't mean that you cannot have success. It doesn't mean that you can't have pentacles. Um, source wants you to be successful. Money is a vibration, okay? So just because you um, are spiritual and you want to heal the world doesn't mean that you cannot be successful and have things that you deem to be lavish, all right? Grounded spirituality is a very real thing and you can live a human existence and still be a beautiful healer, still operate out of unconditional love. They can go hand in hand. It's also though a message I'm getting because this divine masculine has kept himself stagnant, he may be losing money. So spirit may be saying to him because he's not going to his calling, He's losing pentacles. Um, but again, I'm getting something about image here because we have the page of pentacles. Again, this could also be, he doesn't really feel, and I say he, but divine masculine can be male or female in body. This divine masculine may not feel like they have really anything of significance to offer their feminine right now because I think everything they have to offer is in another foundation. And so the page, you know, this is young energy. This is this is a bit childish energy. Um, and, you know, but again, what I'm getting with this card is maybe they thought, well, I'll offer my pentacle. But see the peacock back here? It's very egotistical energy. Um, it's about ego. So I feel like this masculine right now is going... I just heard like deconstruction of the ego. It's almost like an ego death. But again, with the Six of Wands, they want to be successful. They want to be successful with their Divine Feminine. So much fear. So much fear here with the moon. Again, though, this particular moon is pulling this crab out of the, the water. Water is emotion. Pulling it up on the clock. Very similar to this Hanged Man. Again, Hanged Man is Pisces. I feel like this is a... a there's a lot of more Earth here um, in this spread. Uh...
interesting. I just got, but water, a lot of water. Sorry, I'm getting messages. And again, I'm channeling for a collective. So I'm getting a lot of messages here, but I just got a message with all of this money, the King of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles. Um, I just got a message about this particular masculine their destination, their destiny in this life may be to be wealthy. But they don't see how they could do that with the feminine. Or people around them don't think they could achieve that with the feminine. That's a very specific message I just got. My crown chakra is going off. So they've kept themselves stuck. But by keeping themselves stuck, Spirit is saying, actually, you're going to continue losing money. Because you absolutely can be the King of Pentacles and be spiritual and be with your feminine. You're giving your wealth to the wrong people, is what I was just told. Like, your energy towards wealth is directed in the wrong direction. Um... It's energy. If all you care about is this, six of wands, status, society, you're going to keep losing money. This is very specific for somebody. There's so much fear here, but cards, major arcana. This is a very magical divine masculine. Um, the wheel of fortune. This is divine timing again with the clock, the wheel of fortune. This is all happening for a reason. This is all happening on divine timing. This masculine is exactly where they're supposed to be right now. The masculines always heavily focus on monetary, heavily focus on the 3D, as they should, because they're the masculine. They operate out of those lower chakras. And, you know, being a king of pentacles, again, they want to offer their feminine stability, right? But I'm getting a message here. There's something about their feminine that either they've been told that they can't offer that to them or they think because of what their feminine is or does that they, they would never have this kind of success. And spirit is saying, that's not true. That's not true. And you're going to keep going. I'm seeing the tower card when it comes to finances. You're going to keep going through this lesson financially until you change your mindset is what I'm being told. Again, this is a very specific message. But this divine masculine is going to come out of it. Because again, with the magician. And the magician, again, the figure eight, Archangel Metatron. We have the, the ace of wands, the ace of pentacles, the ace of swords, the ace of cups. With the magician, you can have it all. You're supposed to be with your feminine. You're supposed to build wealth with your feminine. You're supposed to, I'm hearing like power couple. But it's an image thing with this divine masculine. And th they have to go through that. So again, trigger warning for our feminines. Um, again, it ties back to that Romeo and Juliet. Um, but in this particular spread, asking how they're feeling about their feminine right now, there's not a lot of love here. So this masculine, I think, is really evaluating their ego, their image, their money. Also, and so with the, with the magician, it's like communication. You can build it. You just have to believe it. And it's almost like whoever told this masculine you can't be successful and be spiritual. Is, it, it's almost like I'm hearing like, why would, why would you believe that? But it's like there's something about this divine masculine surroundings that were so rooted in money. But the it's like, but it's dead. What I'm, it's like the thinking 
is dead. It's a dead thinking. It, it doesn't, it, it, it's not true. Um, but again, this divine masculine is coming into their magic. Like they're starting to realize I can have this. But right now, they're just really going through all of these thoughts. So trigger warning. Um, but they're going to come out of this. They have to go through this thinking. They have to go through the ego deaths. They have to go through looking around foundationally at their surroundings and realizing what's around them and their feminine, right? And then with the devil, this divine masculine may also be breaking addiction. A again, addiction to, to money. It could be addiction to materialism. It could be addiction, actual addictions. A alcohol just came to mind for some reason. Um, especially with, with the hangman and the moon here. Pisces. Um, I'm not saying all Pisces are, are um, into alcohol, but Pisces, the 12th house does rule addictions and the subconscious of that, the 12th house is ruled by Pisces. Um, but this could be breaking free from addiction. Again, this particular devil, he's masked. I say he, um, but this energy is masked. I think this divine masculine has been masked for a long time, but they're starting to come out of that energy. They're starting to see, but they're having to go through all of the feelings, all of the thoughts. They're having to go through all of it. And you know, with the, the love story song, I do think they love their feminine. A hundred percent, I think they love the feminine. But I think right now, they're just trying to figure out the feminine. They're trying to figure out, you know, that beauty and the beast. Yeah, judgment and the high priestess. It's like spiritual awakening. Also magic, coming into their magic. Also secrets, though, with the high priestess. Interesting. I just want to pull some cards. I'm going to pull some cards on the feminine just to see how they're feeling about their masculine. I want to get a song, though, for the feminines. <laughs> I got dirty dancing. Hungry eyes. <laughs> I'm going to link it below. That's very fiery and passionate. <laughs> um, let's see. Spirit, can you give me five cards for the divine feminines, please? Oof. Two of Swords, again with the mask. This is interesting energy. Two of Cups. It's beautiful. Three more cards for our Divine Feminines. How are they feeling about their Divine Masculines? The Fool, right in the middle. That Aries energy. Nine of Wands. Interesting. One more card, please. How is the Feminine? Should I take that? Okay. Oh, wow. Be beautiful. We got the Queen of Wands, the High Priestess at the bottom. Holy crap. We got the Sun and the World card. Okay, everyone. Magical. These are two very magical counterparts. Um, again, tale as old as time. Romeo and Juliet. The masculine is just having, I'm being told, come to terms with their 3D. The masculine is having to really understand their surroundings and really understand. I think they're starting to understand who they are and who their counterpart is, but it terrifies them. It scares the ever-living shit out of them is what I was just told. Also, this, this divine feminine, magical AF. This is a magical divine feminine. Also, I think that terrifies the divine masculine. This divine feminine, the queen of wands and the high priestess, this is a divine feminine who knows all, sees all, is what I was just told. Sees, really sees their divine masculine. Truly sees, it terrifies them. They want to be seen. Scares the fuck out of them, is what I was just told. This is beautiful. A 
again with the moon. The moon is so heavy between these counterparts. Both could be water signs. Cancer. Cancer is heavy here. Cancer is heavy. But the moon, again, secrets, fear. The moon is in every single one of these cards, except for we got the sun. But again, we start off with the two of swords, the moon, the blindfolds. I just heard that ludicrous song in my head. When I move, you move, just like that. When I move, you move, just like that. Hey, DJ, play that back. It's almost like these divine counterparts, true, true twins, twins, uh, twins. When I move, you move, just like that. These two, it's like, Interesting. I just got a message about this card. I don't normally read this this way. Uh, these are two counterparts. When the feminine moves to the left, the masculine goes left. When the feminine goes right, the masculine goes right. These are two very magical divine counterparts. The divine masculine has kept themselves masked in between worlds. I'm seeing that card in my head. I don't remember what deck that... It's from an Oracle deck. It's like in between worlds. It's like in one world, in one world. They've done it on purpose. They are very aware of who their Divine Feminine is. But likening it back to that Romeo and Juliet song. Um, love story. My heart chakra is going off. This Divine Masculine is just so fucking terrified. But the Feminine... We have the moon here. The two of swords usually speaks to a uh, decision, but also blindfolding yourself to a decision, right? I feel though, it's like the feminine has finally got the veil of um, uh, detachment. It's like they were heavy in their emotion with the moon here and spirit was like, nope, it's time. So it's like, energy is coming up. It's like, now we're going to we're we're going to put detachment. We're no longer going to be in our emotion and we're going to go out in the world and we're going to do our magical divine feminine thing. And now that that has happened, the masculine is being forced to take off their blindfold. They're being forced to truly look at their life and the things that they deemed were important to them maybe are not important anymore. This divine feminine though Again, with the Two of Cups, this is mirroring energy. Again, with the rainbow. Again, with the moon. Um, these two, heavily communicating telepathically, energetically. The bond is deep here. These are uh, even. I mean, these are mirrors of each other. Mirrors. When I move, you move. Just like that. I keep hearing that song in my head, that ludicrous song. There is so much love here. But the feminine, I think, is on to, uh, on to new shit. That may be a Taylor Swift song, too. Um, I'm on to some new shit. Saying yes instead of no, I think is what I just heard in my head. The one. I think it's called the one. I'll link it below, too. Um, with the fool, right in the middle here. You know? This divine feminine also birthing something also starting a new a new journey i don't see a baby with this divine feminine though this is like i'm on to my path i'm finally seeing what i'm supposed to be doing in this world again with the planets it's possible again heavy gemini cancer with these two these you know the stars aligned the planets aligned transiting in their chart and it's like spirits like all right it's time so you know the, the feminine now she's I say she, it could be she or he in body. The feminine is like taking that leap of faith into their path, into their spiritual journey. And, you know, wounded warrior, the nine of wands. But again, it's like this feminine, okay, I had eight battles. I feel like the eight battles had to do with emotion. 
This feminine has been highly in their emotion, but they've been fighting those battles, fighting them, fighting them, putting the wand down, fighting the next one, putting the wand down. Yeah, they're a little war torn here, but they're like, you know what? I got one more wand and I am going to do it. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I'm on this planet to do. And spirit is saying, yes, with the sun, this is beautiful. This is Leo energy. Again, with the planets, divine timing, especially with the world here. This is divine timing. This is happening for these two exactly as, as it's supposed to be happening. Um, the feminine is going to be reaping the reward is what I was just told. With the sun, this is beautiful. Also getting noticed. Stepping into a new platform is what I was just told. Again, with the Cancer energy. So we have Mars, and I believe um, that is, is that Jupiter? Uranus, Mars and Uranus over Cancer. I think that may be Uranus there. I think that's, that's Saturn. Um, yeah, Jupiter and Uranus over Cancer. Cancer is heavy in this, in this reading. Capricorn too. Um, again, we had the devil earlier. Uh, Aries. Aries is very heavy too with the full, definitely fire, water. Um, a little bit of air mixed in, but fire, water, and then earth is heavy for these two. And then with the world. And I have to censor this little lady up here. She's naked. But um, this world card, this is like the star. This person is just emblazed. Again, with being seen, this feminine is about to be seen, is what I'm told. I, I'm, it's, like, it's like she sees the masculine, but they're about to be seen. Like on a world stage, is what I was just told. Because this, this is a very magical, beautiful, divine feminine. This is beautiful. Um... I, I just kind of want to get like three cards on like the forward momentum of these two. Um, I didn't really feel the energy of that for the feminine kind of tied into that song, Hungry Eyes. But again, if you think about the movie... Again, it's like these two, again, are mirroring each other. Taylor Swift love story, Romeo and Juliet. The out world, like the outer world doesn't approve. Dirty dancing, you know. Again, society didn't approve. The masculine in that movie was a dancer. He was deemed to be from a less, you know, social society. The feminine was, was upper crust, right? They had to hide their love. Again, these are two people right now who are mirroring each other. And they are heavily mirroring each other. Um, but I think what's happening, it's all happening, divine timing. It's all happening for a reason. Um, the feminine is coming up out of that emotional energy, the longing energy. And spirit's like, all right, it's time. You're about to go forward. So this feminine, you're about to step onto a the world stage, is what I was just told. The masculine is now seeing, truly seeing his feminine. But there's so much fear. There's fear from the masculine about whatever's going on in their life, but also about who their feminine is to them and the world around them, the people around them. There's fear, I think, from the feminine because they've been tied, they've been tethered to that masculine energy, really longing for it. But now they're like, you know what? I'm doing this. And I believe... I, I believe the feminine is alone. So they're having to do it alone. But I just want to get three cards for future. Let's say within the next month for these two. What's coming up for these two, Spirit? Um, the Four of Pentacles. I like that in this, in this instance. Uh, two more cards, please. Two more cards for these two. What's coming up for these two? Oh, I don't want to take that. Two more cards, please. Uh, should I take that one? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy, boy. Oh, my goodness. Should I take that? Okay. All right. 
I don't see anything happening for these two coming up. All right. I got the four of pentacles, the queen of cups, and the hangman. I split the deck and I got the two of cups and the high priestess. So this is what I'm going to say. The four of pentacles. I think these are two people who are never going to let each other go. With the Four of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles could mean obsession, possession kind of thing, like holding on to something. These, these are two counterparts who love each other. They know how they feel about their counterpart. They also know, both of them now, equally know who the other person is to them. They're not going to let them go. But these are also two people right now who are heavily focused on pentacles. The divine masculine, I think, is losing money in their 3D existence. And they're really thinking about how they feel about money. How they feel about money when it pertains to their life. How they feel about money when it pertains to their family. How they were raised to think about money. How they feel about money with their feminine. The feminine, though, is being advised here to kind of hold on to their pentacles. Because they're about to take center stage. I don't know what that means for, for the Divine Feminine Collective that I'm tapping into, but you're growing your pentacles. I just heard it again, birthing something. It takes money to make money is what I was just told, like spending money to make money. Then we got the Queen of Cups again and the Hangman. All right, this is twofold. Again, I think this Divine Masculine is pregnant. Either the divine masculine is a feminine in body and they are physically pregnant or whoever they are attached to, the, the third party is currently with child. It's putting them in this hanged man energy, right? Because obviously a child and children are beautiful. And, you know, I have a cancer north node. You know, I'm tied to children. Again, with the cancer, cancer, queen of cups. Um, children are beautiful. And so this masculine heavily focused on whatever he's birthing, and I say he, but whatever they're birthing physically, I'm thinking it's a human, into their existence. It's putting them in this like stasis energy. But right now, again, with the money, finance is heavy. Money with the divine masculine. I think the divine masculine is just raining money right now, but not in a good way. It's not like um, this... <laughs> I'm kind of seeing like, you know, like at a dancer's club, like, you know, with the money. That's not what I'm saying. Um, it's like, it's like the opposite of that. It's like, it's like the divine masculine wishes. It's like, that's who they used to be, but not anymore. It's what I was just told. Um, so that may resonate with somebody, but it's like, you wish it was raining money, but instead the money is just falling away. Like, like you couldn't keep up with it if you tried. So between the two of these counterparts, also though, the Divine Feminine, I do think the Divine Feminines are in this, you know, this beautiful motherly energy. Queen of Cups is beautiful. You know, it is Cancer. She's the mother. She's nurturing and soft. And I think also whatever's happening in this Divine Masculine's life, the Feminine is like, you know what? Handle your business. Go get your money back. Go get your, you know, figure out your life. Um, so both of them towards each other, they're not letting go, but they're not moving either. The feminine is moving on. The masculine is staying right where they're at because something is being birthed. Also though, so much love. The two of cups here and right underneath that was the lovers. Holy shit. Right under that was the hierophant. And then I had the high priestess and under that was the wheel of fortune again, Okay, these two, tale as old as time. This is beautiful energy. This is beautiful energy. So much love. The love isn't going anywhere. It's all happening. Higher fent, higher wisdom, learning. These two are spiritually ascending on their journey. Wheel of Fortune divine timing also karma so these two are working out their karma independently from each other but they're gonna come back together it's just and they're telepathically communicating always these two always this is beautiful energy i just want to pull one of these uh twin flame ascension cards just to get um guidance from spirit
Spirit, can you give me one card for these two? Guidance, please. What is your guidance for this counterpart couple? Oh, hold on, everyone. Oh my God. <sighs> magical, magical. Yes, okay. Awareness, crystal clear vision. These two are both very aware. The masculine, again, the masculine is now aware of their feminine, very aware of the feminine, very aware of their life, really looking around and trying to figure out what's important. They love the feminine. There's so much love here. But right now I feel like this masculine is more in that really like monetary, 3D, family kind of way. And I think they need to be because I do think that somebody's pregnant here. Again, trigger warning. Um, and you know what? We want our divine masculines. I'm going to say this. Like you want your divine masculine to be a good parent, right? A good father or good mother. You want your divine, that masculine energy is the protector, is the provider, is grounded in the 3D and you want them to be in that energy. So you, even if it's a trigger for you, divine feminines, you want them to be protecting the third party. You want them to be a part of their child's life, right? And so I think spirit is saying, you know what? This is where you're at. This is what's happening. This is what you need to look at. And right now, this masculine is in that hangman stasis. Um, but the blindfold has come off. They're very aware. Again, divine timing. It had to happen like this. They're working through their fear. And they have to. The feminine, also awareness. But the feminine is very aware of their path now. They've come out of that longing energy for their masculine. They still love their masculine. Dirty dancing. A lot of passion here. A lot of love. They see this masculine. They know who the masculine is to them, and they're, they're in, I was just told, in love. They're in love. But you know what else they're in love with? Their path. And spirit is saying, it's time, feminine. It's time. My heart chakra is going off. You need to walk your purpose, walk your path. And they're going to. And I see a grand scale for this feminine. World stage is what I was just told. This is really beautiful, everyone. I hope everybody liked this reading. Um, I send all of our divine masculines and all of our divine feminines so much love. Um, so, so much love. I, will, uh, I hope everybody liked the reading. I will talk to you next time. Bye.